list. I need to start with something. I have a confession to make to all of you. I sort of lied to you. <laughs> because you actually never destroy completely a star. It never gets completely destroyed. You only partially destroy it. You sort of destroy 80% of the star. But there's always something left. There's always a little, like, a little, little part of the star left. So to be fair, the title of my talk should have been partially destroying the star. But that's not very catchy, so I just left it as destroying the star. And we are going to destroy it. Some of it. Almost all of it. Alright? Okay, so let's just start. Roughly, this is actually what I'm going to talk about for the whole 10 or 15 minutes. This is actually what happens. So, remember that Janet told us the stars are born in the stellar nebula or molecular cloud. And depending on their size, so if they're small stars, they go through this scenario, so they become a red giant, then the planetary nebula, and then a white dwarf. And if they're more massive, so these are, these are actually the, the sun type of stars or even up to sort of 8 to 10 solar masses. So if you're 10 times the sun, then you will go through this scenario. So you're a massive star, you're a red super giant, so just a little bit bigger than a giant. And then you explode as a supernova, and after the supernova you, again, depending on the mass, if you're not so massive, you end up as a neutron star, if you're very massive, you end up as a black hole. But I'm going to go through all these scenarios and I'm going to go through it slowly. We're going to take you to where the fit. And we're going to start with the small stars. So again, the small is like the sun. So the sun is very, that's why it says average star. It's like most of the stars in a galaxy is actually the type of the sun. They're very sort of small. If you, when you want to build a galaxy, you're going to have 80 to 90% of the stars are going to be small. And then you're going to have a few that are very, very big. So I know that I told you this is small, this, this is small stars. But to be fair for us, they're actually very, very big. This is a, a scale image of the sun compared to the planets. So this is Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, and the sun is this dot. Bingo! Bingo! <laughs> Amazing! So there's three people. Is it three different things? Can you bring the... That's why it's called Red Giant. So this is going to be, a, this is a view from Saturn. The sun it actually gets so big that it's going to get through the Earth's orbit. It's going to grow so much that it reaches Earth. So this is a view from Earth. This is going to be a sunset or sunrise from Earth. All the oceans on Earth are going to completely melt because it's so hot. The radiation is so, so much. Of course, life on Earth is not going to exist anymore. It's completely, completely dead. And this is the sun growing and it's actually going to engulf completely Earth. So this is the end of civilization as you can see. If we don't kill each other before this, obviously. Which is probably going to happen to be fair. Anyway, so it goes through a red giant. What happens after a red giant? Afterwards, the sun, as you see, it gets so big, it becomes a red giant, and then all the gas that is surrounding this red giant, it just gets ejected, and in the center you have a white dwarf. So this is the very the core of the planetary nebula, or the whole star. The central core is a white dwarf, and around it is just surrounded with all these gas that is actually really, really hot. It's very hot because the central star is very hot as well. So the star 
um, in the center collapses, and the more collapse you have, the hotter it is. And it's so hot that all the gas around it gets also hot, so it's really bright. So this is roughly how the evolution goes. So you start from a very dark cloud, as we were told, then it becomes the sun, it stays in the, in the, actually in the face of the, now when it is the sun, it's like the longest um, part of the evolution, then it becomes a red giant, it loses all the material, and at the center you end up with a very, very tiny white dwarf. Now, this phase is called planetary nebula, and I might be a little bit biased, but there's, these are the stars that I work on, this is what I did my thesis on in my PhD, and now I'm working on planetary nebula, but this is a very, very beautiful image that uh, collaborators from Australia did, and this is, if you have, if you put all the planetary nebula that we know now, and you put them at the same distance, this is actually the size, the real size of the planetary nebula. So you can see that they're from very tiny to very, very big. So this is actually the whole size of one of the planetary nebula, a very famous one. This is the scale, so it means that it will take you, if you could travel at the speed of light, it will take you four years to go from one side to the other side. They're very, very big, some of them. Also, when they're small, it could mean that they're actually kind of very new because the star is just expanding, right? So you can sort of see some sort of evolution in the whole scenario. So I told you that in the center of this star there's a white dwarf, and I said it was really little. So how little it is? Compared to Earth, it's actually a little bit bigger than Earth. So this is what you have left. Everything else gets destroyed and everything else is lost. It's like about 80 or 90 percent of the star, and it just gets completely lost. It passes to the to the universe or the galaxy. That's it. Okay, so I took you through the average or small stars. So now it's going to see the big stars. What's happened to the what's going to happen to the big stars? So as I told you, they go through red supergiant, supernova, and then neutron or black hole. So let's go through that now. I know I said that they're big stars, but what, how big is big, right? Okay, so I'm going to show you scale of how big is big. This is Earth, as you know. <laughs> this is our beautiful star, the Sun. Inside the Sun, you could fit up to 100 Earths in the size, just in size. Now, this is an image of Eta Carina, which is one of the very big stars, and you can fit 100 times the Sun, the size of the Sun. Now, you think this is big, but you probably have heard of Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is one of the brightest stars in the sky. And it's actually 10, a thousand, yeah, a thousand times the sun. And it's not even the biggest. The biggest star that we know of is B.Y. Canis Majoris. It's called B.Y. Canis Majoris because it's the biggest that we know. And this fits up to almost 1,500 suns inside on size. So now you can see what big stars mean, like really, really, really big stars. So the sun is actually quite tiny. What happens to them is something called a supernova. And it's a huge, huge explosion. And this is when you actually destroy most of the star. This is a simulation of one of the very famous supernovas. Um, this is just one fact that in our galaxy, we're supposed to have one supernova every 50 years on average. Sometimes we don't see it because they're actually behind a lot of dust. And as Janet told us, a lot of dust absorbs this light, so we don't actually see the light. But a supernova is a huge, huge explosion. It's actually a lot of energy that is released to the galaxy. So this is a montage of different supernova remnants that we know of. So these are um, different. Sometimes people, sort of, or we as astronomers as well, expect them to be roundish because the explosion is kind of, we expect it to be sort of symmetrical, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Like this is kind of round at the front, but not in the, in the edges. You know, it also depends where the environment, where the supernova is expanding into. So sometimes it's very messy as well. So you can have all sort of like different supernova. Now, inside the supernova, as I showed you, you have a neutron star. So how big is the neutron star? <coughs> Tiny. It's like, uh, you don't even see it, but there's a dot. <laughs> it's a super, super, super tiny dot. So the remnant of the very, very massive stars, they lost most of their mass, and then just the very core compresses and compresses and compresses and gets into a very, very tiny um, space, and it's called neutron star. 
is actually kind of degenerate, you know, it only has neutrons, that's what it's called, neutron star. It loses every, all the other material. Okay, so I took you through neutron star. Now, how do you build a black hole? All right, so this is a video of a simulation of what's going to happen to BY Canis Majoris. This is the star that I show you that's the biggest that we know of. It's so huge that inside, in the core, so we're going to go inside the core, we're going to open the star. I wish we could actually do that. <laughs> we can. So we go inside. You have a really, really, really bright, there's a lot of energy in the core. And at some point, the star runs out of fuel. It doesn't have any more gas to, to fuse. And at some point, in the center, it just collapses. And it collapses, and it forms a black hole. The black hole is called black hole because not even light can escape from it. So it starts eating everything around it. And the thing is, you have the core in the center, and the star is so huge that actually the star hasn't even realized that there's a black hole inside. The moment it realizes, the star collapses completely. And then these are jets of a it's a lot of energy that is released, collapses, and it completely, completely explodes. So this is a way brighter supernova, it's also a supernova event. And these jets of energy, they're actually called gamma ray bursts. And if you remember Janet talk, the last energy part that you have very, very energetic is gamma rays. So these are actually the gamma rays that we observe sometimes in our, in our galaxy or other galaxies. They're made from supernova or from other events as well. So now that I told you how to make black holes, you actually can make a black hole out of anything. You only need to crush or crush the, the, whatever you want to a very, very, very tiny material. So you only need the mass and a very small um, volume. So if you wanted to crush the sun and become a, a black hole, you need to crush it to the size of a town. So now we're crushing and crushing and crushing the sun, and it goes smaller than the earth, smaller than a country. Now it's become a way smaller than a town, and at some point you make it so small that it just becomes a black hole. Now if you wanted to do the same to earth, you would have to crush it to the size of a peanut. So you could actually hold the peanut in your hand. And then the peanut will start eating you because the black hole is going to eat anything around it. <laughs> so you will disappear completely. <laughs> right. So now, now, I told you what type of evolution the stars go through. So how fast or slow this evolution, this evolution happens? So if you are a big star, it takes you 10 to the 6 years. This means 1 and 6 zeros. So it's a million years to go through the whole evolutionary stage. If you're average, like the sun, it takes you 10 to the 9. And if you're normal, uh, uh, smaller, like half the size of the sun, then it takes you 10 to the 12 years. Let's say, I'm gonna, because these are really just big numbers, if you put it on the scale of one day, if you are a very, very big star, you will only last for one day. The sun will live for three years, and the very small stars will actually live for 3,000 years. So you can see that actually the evolution takes completely different. So by the time you're forming, this star is only getting growing, you already destroyed all the supernovas. You already had supernovas happening when these things are evolving, right? So it's a very dynamical environment that you're forming stars around. You're normally going to have a few supernovas that actually, as Janet said, they're going to trigger more star formation. And these ones, they're going to be slowly evolving. And the very, very tiny ones, they're going to live forever till the end of the universe and more, right? It takes forever to, to the star, to, like this, to die. Right, so this is sort of the summary kind of thing. You have a star forming nebula. You have the small stars that go through red giant planetary nebula and a white dwarf. And then you have the massive ones that explore as a supernova. They end up as a neutron star or a black hole. The arrows in here is actually also telling you that this scenario is way faster than this scenario, right? This takes a lot longer. Now, why is it important? Well, because the sun, it was forming one of these. And our planet, it was forming one of these planetary. And actually, now that we study the Earth and the metals and all the elements that we have on Earth, we know that we have to have at least two supernovas around us so that we can have all the material that we have. 
around us. And this is why, if you haven't heard before, you are probably, I'm sure you all have heard, this is why people say that we are made of the star stuff. Because we are. Because we are made all the elements that are forming the stars, and the elements that we have now, that were formed in the stars. So I'm just going to leave you with me, with this. You, me, everyone, we are made of stuff. Thank you very much.